Hey, what's up guys? Chip Walters here for another Blender tutorial. And we're going to start off in SketchUp this time. And we're going to talk about groups and objects and how they are similar and how they are different from SketchUp to Blender. So right now you can see this cube and I'm going to double click on it and you can see that inside it we're in edit mode and we can actually edit the object in here. If I am out, we're back into the cube. This is called the group mode. Okay, so I'm going to go to Blender and we're going to do the same thing. So if you see this outline, when you click on something, you know you're in object mode, and this is the object. And if you want to get inside it, you hit the tab key. Now, all this is orange, means it's all selected. To unselect it, I'll hit the A key, but you'll see that. So now we're in the edit mode. The Blender object is like the SketchUp group, as we said earlier, and it has a set of properties. It's got a location, a rotation, and a scale. I've gone ahead and I've shift-clicked it down here, and I've shown all the gizmos. And notice as I as I move the scale in, this number changes. If I want to, and I just type in 1, it'll send it back. Same thing with rotation. So if I move it around in a rotation mode, if I want to, I can type in 0 and send it back. Let's go to SketchUp. So in SketchUp, we're in group mode, and it's quite a bit different. If I scale this, I'm scaling it now. I don't really know how big that is now, and I don't know how I'm going to get it back to its original. Furthermore, if I want to rotate it, I'm not sure how to find the center of it because I guess it shows an axis over here and we'll rotate it, say, and notice as I'm rotating it, as soon as I finish this, I can type in 60 or something and it'll actually, it'll actually rotate with that number. So we do have control over that. But if I come back here and I, I can't come back here and hit zero, I can just hit an undo. But so there's no way to get this thing back to its original state. Let's go back to Blender. And one thing I want to show here is that as I'm rotating here, I can also type a number like 45 and enter, and it'll, it'll put it right in here. I want to show you how I can use the numeric requester just like we do in SketchUp to move. So as I'm moving this, I'm going to type in 1, and it's just going to stop at 1. Notice up here we're at 1. Okay, I'm going to move it again. I'm going to add 2. Now it added two to one and now we're at three. And of course I can go back in here, set this to zero and we're back at the original. Same thing's true with the rotate. I can start rotating, type in 45 while I'm rotating and it will set it to 45. So that's a powerful tool. Now notice the gimbal here that we're showing. Let me turn off these. And you can see that it's pointed in, in a different direction right now. And that's because we have it set to local coordinates. So we can go global coordinates. This is the global coordinates of the world. Let's talk about some of the differences between SketchUp's groups and Blender's object. I'm going to take this particular group and I'm going to edit it and I'm going to select this top edge and I'm going to fill it it. Now when I take this group and I scale it, we can see that this has been transformed. Let's go to Blender. Let's do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to turn on my axis here. I'm going to go into the edit mode by hitting the tab key. I'm going to control tab and that'll give me vertex edge or face. I'm going to grab an edge and I'll hit the control B key, which is the bevel and I'll drag right and left. That gives me a bevel. And when I roll my mouse key, I can add as many segments as I want and then I let go. Okay. So let's go ahead now and tap out of that and let's scale that. And you see, we have pretty much the exact same thing going on. Here's one of the differences. I can go into the scale here and I can actually type in one and I'm back to the perfect radius here. Back to SketchUp, there's no real way that I can do that. I'm gonna edit this face here. I'll push pull it up and I'm gonna select again this edge and I'm gonna radius it again. And now, as you can see, it is a perfect round radius where this one is not. Let's go back to Blender. We'll tab edit into this and we'll go to Control Tab Grab a face, A to select all, A again to not select. When you select a face, try and select the dot. If you're having trouble selecting a face, you may find that selecting the dot will make it easier. We're going to hit the E key to extrude, and we're going to move it up. And I'm going to go back to edge mode, select this edge, control B to bevel it. And now notice that the actual bevel is respecting the scale of the original object. So how do we keep this from happening in Blender? Let's see. X to delete. And I'm going to go over here under create and create a cube. And I want to set the center of that cube 
because it's a two meter by two meter is the default cube I'm gonna set the center to one and now it's sitting on the ground now as we saw before if we scale the cube and then apply a bevel in edit mode it's gonna distort the bevel so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna scale the cube in the Y I'm just gonna basically click here and drag and that scales it now before I go and edit it I am going to reset that scale so I can do this using the control a shortcut so I can apply the scale here and when I do that it resets this to one now I can go in there and edit that or I can also do that by going under the object and saying apply scale and it does the same so I can do this for scale and rotation and location so now that I've applied it I'll go back into the edit mode by hitting the tab key hit the A key to deselect everything I see that I'm already in the edge mode so I'm gonna click here control B move it and now you can see as I move around that we have a perfect bevel here let's pause for a moment and look at some of the shortcut keys we've been using so as you recall tab moves us from object to edit mode and once you're in edit mode these little buttons down here select whether you're in face mode select face edge mode select the edges and vertex mode which is where you select vertexes also if you recall the a key toggles the select all to deselect all so here we have those and that's also found here under select deselect all select deselect select all so there's where that that's found back to edge modes if we want to actually bevel we can go under the mesh and we can go under edges and in edges we'll see there's a bevel and then we just drag my our mouse without pressing the mouse button to bevel and roll the scroll wheel to add more bevels switching over to face mode we'll click on this face and we want to extrude again mesh extrude region and that gives us our ability to extrude so now we have basically taken a lot of those keyboard shortcuts and made them available to you via the menus and these little buttons down below there's some really cool things you can do when you understand how scale works in the object mode so let's select an object and let's use a modifier I know we haven't talked about them and we'll get to, to them in more detail but I'm gonna add a bevel modifier to this object I'm gonna basically make the width a little bit larger and to make the segments as many as I want let's see let's make it maybe 12 and then I'm gonna stretch this out so watch when I stretch remember we saw that distortion happening but when I do control a and I say apply the scale to this notice that the modifier now is applied after the scale is at one and it is a perfect fillet or bevel once again back in SketchUp let's talk about a couple other differences between blender objects and sketchup groups here we have a group we double click now we're in the edit mode I'll triple click to select all and I'll go to the move key move mode and I'm gonna move this out so now I've got another set of polygons within the same group I'll group these let's group these all as well so now if we go over to our outliner we'll see we have one group and each inside that group we have two other groups this is not possible in blender let's take a look here we are in object mode tab to go into edit mode shift d will give us a duplicate i'm gonna hit the x key to constrain it move it over here now if i tab again i'm back into this object mode and this is just one level deep there's no way i can put a second object inside a first object but what i can do is i can create hierarchies parent child relationships and this is real important when you're trying to create something like a robot arm or or a figure moving and this is something that SketchUp doesn't do so while SketchUp has the ability to put groups inside of groups Blender does not have the ability to put objects inside of objects one thing we have not talked about is groups in Blender yes Blender also has groups let's see how that works here we have a single object and the way I know that is because when I tap A and I deselect it and then I tap it both of these objects are selected so I know this is a single object up here it's highlighted it says it's cube in order to group something I want to have multiple objects and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually tab into this and this was already selected but I'll hit the A key and then I'm going to actually select I can actually uh, go into the faces mode select a face and then control L or 
select linked will get all of those. And then what I want to do is I want to separate it from this current object. So I'll go into mesh and I'll go into vertices and I'll go into separate P selection. So now we have a different object. I'll hit the tab key to get out. So I have one here and one here, two different objects. Let's say I want to do the reverse. Let's say I want to put this cube back in with this cube. So I'm going to click on the first cube and the second cube. So notice that this first cube has a different color outline than the second cube. This is the color outline of the cube that is the object that it will be joined with. So I'm going to join the polygons in this object with the polygons in this object and make only one object and it'll be this object. So to do that, we go over here and say Control J, join. And if I go to tab in edit mode, you'll see that now all the polygons are in one object. To create a new group of multiple objects in Blender, we first must select the objects we want in the group. Shift click to select. Now we have two objects under the object menu. We have group, create new group. Now they have a grain border. But these aren't typical group objects as you're familiar with in SketchUp. For instance, if I click this one object and move it, I'm moving it independent of the other. And if I click this one, I'm moving it independent of the other. So how do I get to be able to select both of these in the same group? Well, of course I can shift click and select both of them, but that really kind of defeats the purpose. So to select all objects in the group, I use the shift G menu and that says select group. And I just run down and hit the group button. Now I have them all and I can move them around. Another way to do this is go up to the outline mode up here and we can move down and we can see that we have groups and so we can toggle the selection on and off here. Groups can be very powerful in Blender and can be likened to components in SketchUp because groups can be used as instances just as objects can be used as instances. We will delve into that in another tutorial.